Plus, Dieter, good to see you again. Yeah. When we met one year ago for an interview for this training, you still had to get the clean energy package approved. So you did that, congratulations, and you've also been promoted. So well deserved, I would say, after such a big project. Um, could you give us maybe some of the insights what happened during these negotiations? Yes, uh, I mean, uh, some insights. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, uh, we are of course very happy uh, and also grateful for the Austrian presidency that did a great job here uh, and uh, also um, the rapporteurs from the European Parliament. It was a very difficult uh, final round, I must say. It started very slowly, uh, the whole negotiations and uh, the technical talks uh, went well. But then at the end, of course, uh, you always come to some really uh, big nuts uh, to be cracked. Mm. And uh, the biggest nuts you, uh, I could summarize in, in three, on mm. three issues. The first, of course, under the directive was uh, the regulated prices. Yes, uh, That was clear right from the beginning. And um, uh, I can say that uh, we, as a commission, we didn't know what we would really get out of it. Mm. And uh, some might now say, oh, the glass is half uh, empty. Mm. Uh, I would say the glass is half mm. full. Yes, we could not establish a real phase-out date for regulated prices, and it's still one of our objectives. Mm -hmm. Now, there is no end date for the regulated prices, but what, what we have uh, is that for those member states that continue to apply regulated prices for um, households and uh, micro-enterprises, that uh, they have to fulfill a number of uh, market uh, criteria. Mm -hmm. And this now uh, gives uh, the Commission also the possibility to have a stronger grip on um, the control of uh, regulated prices. So in that sense, it was good. The second uh, issue was, of course, uh, the cross-border um, capacity calculation. Yep. Uh, you know, these uh, magical 75% that were in the room, it, uh, then it uh, came down to 70% and 30% now margin for the TSOs uh, for loop flows, yeah. internal flows, and uh, the reliability margin that has gone in. Um, that was, of course, uh, a pretty uh, political mm -hmm. issue uh, for mainly one member state. Mm -hmm. uh, I know best. <laughs> Um, but uh, you will see uh, it might even uh, now come also to the other member states. Okay. That was the second issue. And the third issue, and I can say that was the most difficult one, uh, also predicted, and that was the uh, emission performance standard in the mm -hmm. ca uh, capacity mechanism, yeah. the 550 grams. Mm -hmm. And uh, here um, it was very, very tough, mm -hmm. and it uh, seemed as if uh, things uh, would really fail on this point uh, to finalize before Christmas. But at the end of the day, um, we came, I think, to a very, uh, very, very good uh, compromise. Um, on one hand, uh, for the, um, exi uh, for the um, existing contracts that have been uh, mm -hmm. concluded uh, under an existing capacity mechanism mm -hmm. before the 31st of December mm -hmm. this year, we are grandfathering these uh, contracts in full. But on the other hand, um, that helps Poland, let's uh, yeah. be clear. But uh, on the other hand, uh, for uh, the uh, existing, uh, other existing uh, capacity mechanisms, they are now going out in 2025. Mm -hmm. And for new ones, uh, the uh, um, emission performance standards uh, applies from the first day, yeah. 1st of January 2020. So uh, I think it is a fair compromise because uh, nobody has an interest really uh, to go uh, into a member states and uh, asking for the impossible. And here I think it's a good balance. We're building Europe step by step. And exactly. I would say it's yes. a big step. Yes. So again, congratulations. Thank you. You also joined us at the end of the training last time and you will do that again. With great pleasure. It was my really a great experience and I would like to do it again. Great. <laughs> Uh, maybe one more question then on, so, so there is still a lot of implementation coming, so that will now be the new focus. One of these elements that is already happening right now is these national energy and climate plans that you will also be reviewing. So how do you see that uh, going forward? Because that's a new topic we will also include in this training. 
Yes, I think uh, on the um, implementation, I think mm -hmm. uh, there are two things. This mm -hmm. is the government thing, but mm -hmm. when I mentioned um, the capacity calculation, yeah. uh, here uh, already we will have an implementation okay. uh, issue okay. this year. Okay. Um, and maybe you can also focus on yes. that because uh, the implementation starts already uh, with the entry into force, which mm -hmm. we expect in June, July. Okay. And then, uh, for instance, uh, those member states who cannot uh, fulfill the 70% mm -hmm. uh, cross-border trade making available 70% okay. of the, for the cross-border trade, they have to come forward uh, okay. with an action plan. Yes. And uh, this is also something that uh, we, of course, have to monitor. Mm -hmm. In general, the monitoring mm -hmm. of um, the uh, market design now mm -hmm. is an issue and uh, my idea there also is that uh, a bit like we are doing already uh, for the network codes yes. implementation that we should have a kind of steering group that okay. uh, really looks and, yeah. and uh, um, follows the implementation on these issues. On the governance what you are mentioning that's very interesting yes the climate and mm -hmm energy uh, plans from the member states, they are now with the Commission. Mm -hmm. We have until June mm -hmm. uh, to analyze them. And uh, the interesting thing here is, of course, that you are combining in these plans mm -hmm. uh, m many different yeah. things. Uh, you have, of course, uh, to analyze it, what does this individual plan of each member state contribute for the fulfillment of our um, climate goals, but you also can combine this with uh, the uh, other action plans, mm -hmm. be it in the risk preparedness yeah. or be it, as I mentioned, for the cross-border. Mm -hmm. All this comes together and gives uh, us a very, very sound basis on which we then can develop, together with the member states concerned, of course, mm -hmm. improvements of uh, the situation. So in general, I think um, this is a novelty, yeah. uh, these uh, climate and energy plans. But um, the Commission will take not, maybe that I can already release here, uh, we will not take, um, let's say, a quantitative mm -hmm. uh, approach to that and looking, oh, you could do 0.5% mm -hmm. more here mm -hmm. or there. Mm -hmm. It is more a qualitative okay. uh, approach uh, we are looking at and want to see, do they really make uh, the right efforts in order to improve uh, the energy system in their country? with positive mm -hmm. uh, externalities in the region and then for Europe as a whole. So it's only just starting. Just starting, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a new year. Exactly. <laughs> so thanks again and I look forward to see you again at the end of the training in June uh, in the closing debate. I will be there. Thank you. <laughs>